the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, the Sri Lankan government aims to reach annual export revenues of 36 billion US dollars by 2029, as stated by the Export Development Board. Sri Lanka's tea production declined by 8% to 21.15 million kilograms last month, while exports increased by 14%, reaching 20 million kilograms. On the last trading day of the week, the market bounced back from its earlier downward trend, gaining positive momentum. The S&P SL20 ended higher and the ASPI posted a net gain, indicating an overall improvement in market performance. And Wall Street's major indexes ended higher following volatile trading with the Dow and the S&P 500 reaching one-week peaks, despite persistent worries over the economy and inflation. From Studio 24, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us. President Anra Kumara Desanayake has stated that the government expects to finalize a staff level agreement with the International Monetary Fund by today. This agreement is seen as a significant step towards securing the country's economic stability and advancing ongoing financial discussions with the IMF. The president made the announcement while delivering the government's policy statement. President Anur Kumar Desanaka revealed that he expects the staff level agreement to be signed by tomorrow, adding that the journey going forward with IMF is a decision move. President Desanaka further said that he is also hopeful that debt restructuring talks will be completed by December this year. He said his party was elected to power at a time when discussions on debt restructuring with bilateral creditors and international sovereign bondholders were at the final stages. <laughs> President Anur Kumar Desanayake outlined plans to boost Sri Lanka's economy through strategic development in tourism, IT, fisheries and mineral resources. Speaking in Parliament, he emphasised the importance of public-private partnerships and revitalising the SME sector. Desanayake also highlighted tourism as the fastest way to increase revenue, positioning it as a key driver for economic recovery and growth. He also stressed the need for targeted investments and infrastructure improvements to support these sectors ensuring long-term sustainability. The President's vision aims to create jobs, attract foreign investment and drive the nation towards a more resilient economy. The Sri Lankan government has set an ambitious target of achieving annual export revenues of 36 billion US dollars by 2029, according to the Export Development Board. Sri Lanka's Export Development Board has unveiled an ambitious plan to nearby double the country's export revenue by the year 2029. As outlined by the EDB chairman Mangala Vijay Singha, the strategy aims to boost merchandise exports from the current average of US dollars 12 billion to 25 billion US dollars, while increasing service exports from 3.6 billion dollars to 11 billion dollars over the next five years. The plan also targets a significant acceleration in the country's export growth rate from the current 4 to 6 percent to a projected 14 to 15 percent in the beginning beginning of next year. By 2029, the government aims for a total export revenue target of $45 billion, including earnings from tourism. During an EDB media briefing, Vijay Singh emphasized the government's deep understanding of the critical role exports play in driving economic growth and highlighted the various strategies set in place to achieve these ambitious goals. <laughs> Sri Lanka is enhancing its transshipment operations with strong backing from fast-growing economies, particularly India, as the Sri Lanka Ports Authority accelerates key development projects. The port of Colombo, Sri Lanka's primary transshipment hub, handled 8.2 million 20-foot equivalent units in this year, reflecting a 10.5% year-on-year growth. With major development projects underway at the east and west container terminals, the port's capacity is set to nearly double the 15 million TEUs upon completion. Key developments include the expansion of the east container terminal jetty, which will stretch from 600 meters to 1,320 meters, with construction expected to be completed by mid-2026. The Colombo West International Terminal, which is a public-private partnership involving India's Adani Group, John Kills Holdings and the Sri Lankan Ports Authority, is scheduled to begin operations in next year February with an initial 700-metre section. The full 1,400-metre terminal is expected to be operational by late 2026. Consultancy work for the next phase of the West Container Terminal expansion is already underway, with plans to add an additional 1,400 metres of terminal space, further boosting Colombo's transshipment capabilities. 
Sri Lanka's tea production dropped by 8% to 21.15 million kilograms last month, according to the latest figures, while exports saw a positive growth of 14%, reaching 20 million kilograms. Sri Lanka's tea production saw a slight increase in the first 10 months of 2024, rising by 0.5% to 217.65 million kilograms, compared to 216.49 million kilograms in the same period last year, according to data from Ceylon Tea Brokers and the Sri Lanka Tea Board. While production experienced modest growth, exports showed a more robust performance with a 1.7% rise reaching 203 million kilograms. October 2024 proved to be a strong month for Sri Lankan tea exports as earnings surged by 32.6%, totaling $126 million, compared to $95 million in October last year. Over the first 10 months of the year, export earnings amounted to $1.1 billion, marking an increase from $1 billion in the same period in the last year. This positive trend in both production and export earnings highlights the resilience of Sri Lanka's tea industry despite ongoing challenges. Let's take a short break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. On the final trading day of the week, the market reversed its previous downward trend, gaining positive momentum. The S&P SO20 closed higher and the ASPI recorded a net increase, reflecting an overall improvement in market performance. For further insights, we spoke with Vinodini Rajapupati from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. The Columbus Stock Exchange concluded the week on a positive note, rebounding from yesterday's profit-taking. However, retail participation moderated compared to previous sessions. Investors maintained a bullish sentiment towards banking sector stocks with notable interest in Commercial Bank, Pan Asia Bank and Ceylon Bank. Furthermore, select stocks in the hotel and plantation sectors sustained investor interest throughout the trading session. Consequently, the All Share Price Index closed the day at 13,054, reflecting a gain of 72 points from the previous session. Similarly, the S&P SL20 index recorded an increase of 10 points, ending the day at 3,871. Meanwhile, the market turnover experienced a 51% decline compared to the monthly average, settling at 1.9 billion rupees for the day. The banking sector led the market turnover, contributing 39%, while the capital goods and food, beverage and tobacco sectors collectively accounted for 23% of the total turnover. The top three gainers for the day were Nation Lanka Finance, Salon Printers and P Paragon Salon. On the other hand, the top three losers were Blue Diamonds Non-Voting, Bukit Dara and Nation's Trust Bank Non-Voting. The market reversed its previous downward trend at the start of the week, gaining positive momentum over the last three days. The S&P SL20 closed higher and the ASPI recorded a net increase. For further insights, we spoke with Manusha Kandanarachi from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. During the week, Colombo Stock Exchange experienced mixed trading activity with investor interest centered towards banking, hotels, food beverage and tobacco and blue chip stocks generating moderate turnover levels. Moreover, mixed participation from both retail and high net worth investors also observed. The Colombo Stock Exchange started the week in a bullish note following the landslide victory of the ruling government which enhanced the positive sentiment of the investors as investors extended the positive sentiment of the previous week with all share price index soaring to 13,231 gaining 32 points on Monday. Banking stocks and blue chip firms took the center stage with increased participation from both high net worth and retail investors. Towards the middle of the week, selling pressure and profit taking emerged predominantly in the banking and blue chip counters as, or as the all share price index experienced few volatile trading sessions. 
Despite this, investors maintain a positive sentiment towards hotel sector counters with a surge of interest in the Kingsbury, John Keels Hotels and Maravel Resorts emerging in the market along with stocks in the food, beverage and tobacco sector such as Ceylon Cold Stores and Butterbella Plantations. However, this turn proved short-lived as the market shifted to an upward momentum closing the week on a positive trajectory. With that, all share price index experienced a 1.1% decrease compared to the prior week's close of 13,199 and closed the week at 13,054. Moreover, the average daily turnover decreased by 51% to 2 billion rupees, largely due to a lack of off-board transaction in the market. Meanwhile, banking, capital goods and food beverage and tobacco sectors contributed majorly to the overall turnover. Furthermore, foreign investors maintain a net selling position for the week, resulting a 2.1 billion net foreign outflow. This was primarily driven by falling selling on stocks such as John Keels Holdings, Sampath Bank and Melsta Corp. Gold prices were on track for their best week in a year, driven by safe haven demand amid escalating tensions in the Russia-Ukraine war and investor uncertainty over U.S. interest rate cuts. Spot gold rose 0.7% to $2,687.87 per ounce, marking a nearly 5% gain for the week, its strongest since early October last year. U.S. gold futures also increased by 0.6%, reaching $2,690.10. The surge in gold reflects growing geopolitical concerns and economic uncertainty with investors turning to the precious metal as a hedge against risks. Oil prices saw a rise in Asian trade today, heading for a positive week, as heightened concerns over the Russia-Ukraine conflict prompted traders to add a greater risk premium to crude. Rent oil futures for January delivery climbed 0.4% to $74.54 a barrel, while West Texas intermediate crude futures rose 0.5% to $70.10 a barrel. Both contracts were up between 4% and 5% for the week, reflecting strong market sentiment. The price gains were also supported by supply disruptions in Norway and a temporary pullback in the dollar which helped strengthen demand for oil. Additionally, reports indicating that the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries and its allies were likely to delay a planned production hike further bolstered prices. These factors combined to push oil prices higher as traders remain focused on geopolitical risks and supply uncertainties. The Sri Lankan rupee saw a slight appreciation against the US dollar in commercial banks today compared to yesterday. According to the commercial bank, the buying rate of the US dollar has decreased while the selling rate remains unchanged. Now let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee is faring against other global currencies. short break now this is the nightly business report welcome back Jetstar Asia marked the launch of its direct flights between Singapore and Colombo. Jetstar Asia's flight 3K333 took off from Singapore's Changi airport marking the launch of the airline's new direct route to Colombo the service provides an affordable and convenient travel option for those looking to explore Sri Lanka's vibrant capital. Operating five return flights each week using Airbus A320 aircraft, the new route offers passengers flexible departure times with both morning and evening options available for those connecting through Singapore. The airline expects to provide over 90,000 low fare seats annually, giving Singaporeans and regional travellers an exciting new destination to visit. 
Sri Lankan Airlines won the prestigious 2025 Apex Best Entertainment Award in Central and Southern Asia at the FTE Apex Asia Expo in Singapore yesterday. The Apex Awards are based on certified passenger feedback with over a million flights rated across 600 airlines on various experience metrics. In addition, Sri Lankan Airlines retained its status as a four-star major airline in the 2025 Apex Official Airline Ratings for the eighth consecutive year. The airline's in-flight entertainment system features a wide selection of Hollywood blockbusters, the latest releases and an extensive catalogue of regional South Asian films. Passengers can enjoy a variety of genres including action, comedy, drama and sports as well as over 100 audio albums from international hits to local classics. This recognition highlights Sri Lankan Airlines' commitment to providing an exceptional flying experience for its passengers. Galadari Hotels PLC has signed a landmark restaurant management agreement with Soho Hospitality Corporate Service Provider FZ Co, a leading restaurant operator based in Dubai, UAE. Galadari Hotels PLC has entered into a strategic partnership with Soho Hospitality Corporate Service Provider FCCO, a prominent restaurant operator based in Dubai, UAE following a decision by the Galadari Hotels board on last week. This landmark agreement marks a significant step forward in enhancing the dining experience at Galadari Hotel. The agreement will facilitate the development, management and operation of the renowned Above Eleven restaurant at the hotel. Soho Hospitality, known for its innovative and world-class dining concepts, will bring its expertise to this exciting venture. The agreement grants Soho Hospitality the exclusive rights to use the esteemed name and mark above level all mutually agreed upon alternative, ensuring a premium dining experience that reflects their commitment to the culinary excellence. This collaboration aims to elevate the gastronomic landscape of Colombo, offering both locals and visitors a sophisticated and memorable dining experience. Now, local hospitals PLC has appointed Dr. Chamara Bandara as an independent non-executive director to its board. Dr. Bandara holds a PhD in business management and an MBA and is the founder of SCB Corporate Corporate Doctors Limited and Berry Technology Limited. With experience across industries like construction, hospitality and garments, he is also the vice president of AAT Sri Lanka and an independent director of Kapruka Holdings PLC. Dr. Bandara has previously served as country representative for Faster Capital Global Incubator and a council member of Rajarata University of Sri Lanka. His extensive leadership experience is expected to add significant value to the board's strategic direction and decision making. Commercial Bank of Ceylon has announced a partnership with Agstar PLC to promote smart agriculture machinery and equipment via the bank's Diribala Green Development Loan Scheme. A memorandum of understanding between the bank and Agstar has opened the door for farmers who take out loans from the bank to purchase advanced agricultural equipment from Agstar, such as intercultivators and irrigation systems, with exclusive discounts and added benefits. Under this agreement, Agstar will offer a 5% discount to the bank's customers, along with free advisory services and complimentary installation of the equipment. The collaboration is aimed at promoting smart agricultural practices, providing farmers with tools that enhance precision watering, soil management and pest control. These innovations are designed to help farmers adapt to climate variability, making their operations more resilient to droughts, extreme weather and other climate-related challenges, while protecting their investments and improving crop yields. The bank emphasized that this partnership goes beyond financial support, extending to training, after-sales service and equipment maintenance. Let's take a short commercial break. Global business updates coming on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. 
Most Asian stocks rose today, supported by gains in chip making and cyclical sectors, which helped markets navigate heightened tensions surrounding the Russia Ukraine conflict. Regional markets drew positive momentum from Wall Street, with chip maker stocks, notably Nvidia Corporation, benefiting from a record high set yesterday. Japan's Nikkei 225 index climbed 1.2%, while the topics rose 0.8%, fueled by gains in tech and cyclical stocks. However, both indexes were still on track for mild weekly losses. Chinese stocks underperformed with the Shanghai Shenzhen CSI 300 and the Shanghai Composite Indexes both falling by 0.5%. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index dropped 0.2% as investor sentiment towards China was dampened by the absence of concrete details on additional stimulus measures. Wall Street's main indexes closed higher after choppy trading with the Dow and the S&P 500 hitting one-week highs, despite ongoing economic and inflation concerns. Wall Street's main indexes closed higher after choppy trading on Thursday, despite a drag by some big tech names. The Dow gained 1 percent, the S&P 500 added about half a percent, and the Nasdaq ended roughly flat. Shares of Alphabet touched a four-week low after the Justice Department argued to a judge that Google must sell its Chrome browser and take other measures to end its monopoly of online search. And Amazon fell after a report said it will likely face an EU investigation next year into whether it favors its own brands on its online marketplace. On the flip side, shares of Wall Street's biggest company, NVIDIA, seesawed a day after its earnings release, ultimately adding half a percent. And shares of cloud company Salesforce climbed 3 percent after three brokerages lifted their price targets on the stock. On the data front, last week's jobless claims unexpectedly fell, suggesting a rebound in job growth in November. Investors will be closely monitoring commentary from Federal Reserve officials before the mid-December policy meeting. Traders also monitored geopolitical tensions between Ukraine and Russia that sent crude prices higher and added a 0.8 percent gain in the energy sector. Indian conglomerate Adani Group lost around $27 billion in market value after U.S. prosecutors charged its billionaire chairman Gautam Adani over an alleged bribery and fraud scheme. Indian conglomerate Adani Group lost around $27 billion in market value on Thursday after U.S. prosecutors charged its billionaire chairman over an alleged bribery and fraud scheme. Gautam Adani's flagship company, Adani Enterprises, closed down 23 per cent in its worst one-day drop since February 2023 and its lowest since November last year. Other group firms also fell between 7 and 19 per cent. The fundamentals of our company... The US indictment accuses Adani, one of the world's richest people, his nephew, Sagar, as well as six others of paying $265 million in bribes to Indian government officials to obtain solar energy supply contracts. Arrest warrants have been issued in the US for Adani and Sagar. In a statement, Adani Group dismissed the accusations as baseless and denied and vowed to seek all possible legal recourse. Prosecutors also allege the Adanis and former Adani Green CEO Vinik Jain concealed corruption from lenders and investors to secure $3 billion in loans and bonds. Adani Green Energy cancelled plans to raise $600 million in US dollar denominated bonds after the news. Some Adani dollar bonds also slumped, with prices down 3 cents to 5 cents. And that's all from us here at the Nightly Business Report for this week. We'll see you again on Monday with the latest updates across the business globe. Until then, I'm Anuradha Vikramasinghe. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great weekend.